Hello, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and we're here to talk about all sorts of wonderful things happening today. Uh, this morning, I'm mean, talking about a little bit of news items of what's happening here in Missoula, Montana, and around the world. I'll also be showing a couple of short videos, some art clips. Uh, we have some guests on here as well from the Missoula Aging Services, and we have Climate Smart coming on as well to talk about their one year anniversary. Congratulations. So, uh, but first, let's throw it to weather. So, um, Today, it's uh, currently 27 degrees outside. You can expect um, that snow to be happening out there. I scraped my window, it was kind of, it was kind of ridiculous, but it's all right. Um, you have a 30% chance of snow happening today. Tonight, you have a 60% chance of snow. Just all sorts of snowy weather happening out there. And it's great, I mean, like, uh, winter started about the winter time, just perfect amount of time. Fall lasted a lot longer than we uh, thought it did because last year it just kind of blinked and just kind of went past us. Um, but this year we had a nice fall, and this year hopefully we have a nice winter. We're, we are expected to have a lot more snowfall this year as well. But um, but that's it. A little bit of bit a little bit of weather, but of course we do have some news items. So let's talk about um, Montana news. I was listening to an article on NPR. Um, the in part posted a story about a Korean American man from Kalispell, Montana. It's a really good story about race and equality in towns towards the north, uh, our, our neighbors to the north um, in Montana, uh, that have a thriving uh, libertarian party, no doubt, and uh, how some places up there uh, are not only red, but also a very far right conservatives. It also mentions some organizations formed back in 2010 that denied the Holocaust and uh, made videos about it and used the uh, p uh, local library. Uh, it's very interesting um, stuff and there's a lot of uh, locals in the area kind of keep to themselves, but it's a, it's a good story that puts a highlight on certain Montana you know, towns and cultures. Um, but it also talks to, uh, uh, it was very interesting that they talked about some whitefish, some people for up in whitefish and how some people had to deal with some uh, racism up there. So you guys can totally check it out. It's on NPR. But of course, in the national news, uh, Standing Rock in North Dakota, they, um, if you haven't already seen what's been going on over there, um, they've been, they, a lot of the protesters there have been met with milita militarized police and um, they've been hosting protesters in the area. Um, and of course, I found um, there's a video you can watch online as well of it. I'm not going to show you. I'm just going to kind of skip ahead. But of course, you guys can check it out. There's many platforms you can check it out. Um, you can always um, stand with Standing Rock on the face on their Facebook page, or uh, you can um, give your support. Um, of course, um, in the world news, um, the Brazil's um, Chapecozi uh, football team and Colombia, their, um, their plane crashed. Uh, the plane carrying 77 people, including the top Brazilian uh, soccer team, or football team as the world calls it, um, they crashed on approach to the city of Mandolin in Colombia. Uh, the Colombia civil aviation body says that only six people survived the class uh, survived the crash. Um, they blamed it on the electrical. Um, the team has been due to play in the final of the Copa Super Americana against uh, Ma Mandolin team uh, Atletico Nacional. And of course, organizers say uh, they ask to be, uh, they, a they actually, their team says that they want the um, team to be awarded the cup as a memorial. Um, and of course, Brazilian clubs have offered to lend players to the team for next year, which is, uh, which is great. Um, Colombian um, uh, uh, aviation official says there are about 21 journalists on board as well. But of course, that's basically what's happening in the world news today. Um, I have a nice little art clip for you guys, and this won't be showing. Uh, this will be showing today and Friday, and I won't be showing it too much later on this week as well because this art installation will end at the MAM um, this Saturday, so you only have this first Friday to check out this art installation. It's uh, Vol Valkyries, so you guys can check it out. And also they'll have a whole new um, set up there. Um, it's called Binary, so I'll talk more about that on Friday. But of course, here is your art clip, and when we come back, we'll have Climate Smart Missoula on. <laughs>
Hey guys, I'm here with Amy Sillenberg, and she's here to talk about your one year anniversary of Climate Smart Missoula. And for uh, those at home or online who are watching, what is Climate Smart Missoula? Um, Climate Smart Missoula is a newish uh, community effort to address climate change, both um, how to reduce our carbon footprint and how do we prepare for changes that are coming given climate change. So it's a super collaborative community project. Um, we are actually a program of the Missoula Community Foundation, and we kind of work as a, as a hub, fostering partnerships, connecting people, and taking action to address climate change in our community. Cool. Very local. Cool. And um, after one year, what kind of stuff have you guys have, have done in this past year that you really want to highlight? Yeah, so um, we, we did... For, this is an ongoing effort. Yeah, people have been sort of addressing climate change in our community for many, many years. But we formalized ourselves last fall, so 2016 is our first full year. Um, the big project that we really launched this year was a, um, kind of an adaptation and resiliency project called Summer Smart, helping to prepare our community for changing summer conditions, wildfire smoke and heat. And we did work with partners to do a whole bunch of um, education and outreach, and um, starting to plan and work for how we how we better prepare, especially working with vulnerable populations, folks that are sensitive to smoke, um, seniors that may have a hard time with extreme heat, those kinds of things. But at the same time we're doing that, there's also a lot of efforts to um, reduce our carbon footprint. We're actually just finishing up a inventory to say, you know, figure out what is our carbon footprint um, for the community. How much energy do we use and then how can we um, start to reduce that and that's going to be a big project for 2017 is the actual getting our community behind um, hedging that that footprint downward. Mm -hmm. um, we worked on transportation issues, we're really into um, working with Trees for Missoula and some projects around building more shade and, and trees in our community because that helps when it gets hot and there's a lot of benefits to having a stronger um, urban forestry program so it's kind of all over the map. Yeah that's really cool um, and you're also having a celebration event happening at one of the breweries here in town can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah we've been um, we've been meeting at Imagination Brewing at doing what we call monthly meetups so a different area a topic area around climate change the first Thursday of every month and so we thought well this final one in December will turn it into a one-year celebration and a party. Um, so from 5 to 7 um, this Thursday at Imagination Brewing just over on West Broadway um, we're going to be meeting we have um, in the tap room and we're going to be giving away what we consider our first annual Smarty Pants Awards since we're Climate Smart <laughs> Missoula. So we have four awards we're going to um, surprise people with and give away and then we have a cakewalk, we have some kids activities and it's just an opportunity for people to um, to, to come and learn more about us, but also figure out where they might tap in. I think there's a lot of people looking, hey, what can I do in my local community right now on climate change, sort of given the scope of the problem and the, the international response and the, you know, we just, yeah. we know we need to, to dive in deep and, and start doing more. What, um, what kind of uh, events that are, uh, are coming up, um, what, what, are your, uh, what do you hope to do in the future? What, what do you hope to do with your second year? Our second Smart? year, yeah. Well, we want to continue to build out our Summer Smart program so we can really help, um, you know, make a difference for um, some of our vulnerable populations and folks in the community. Um, and that's, again, a lot working with different partners. Um, we also really, so now that we know our energy footprint, we're going to be kind of releasing a report on that um, in the next couple weeks. Um, we really want to f work with the community to figure out how we can all reduce our energy use, so have a big energy challenge. Can we as a community um, reduce our energy footprint by 10%? Um, it, there's a lot of things that we could do in the built environment, whether it's residents or homes or buildings. Um, so that's one of the big projects. We're definitely going to build out some of the things we started with Trees for Missoula, um, working on helping to connect um, trees, especially in places where people don't have them. They're really good, helpful to cool, and there are um, <laughs> a lot of benefits to having a strong urban forestry program is one project. Um, and you know, there's just a lot of connections between climate and health that we want to continue to build out. Great. So. Well, I hope the best for you guys. Thank and, you. And congratulations on one year. Thank you. And of course, if you want more information, you go to uh, uh, MissoulaClimate.org. Yep, or Climate Smart Missoula. It all gets you to the same place. Yeah, we really do have a lot of information on our, our website and ways that people can tap in and, and get involved. All right, great. And hopefully come to our party. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, is there anything else you want to say? Um, just thanks, Scott, for, for doing this and for having us here on, on MCAT. Yeah, thanks.
All right, and we'll be right back. We'll have Missoula Aging Services right uh, coming right on right after this. Birthdays come and go, each year adding up to a lifetime full of extraordinary moments. At Missoula Aging Services, we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults. We are ready to help connect seniors to the help they need. Knowing you've got friends to support you, each birthday can be special. See how we can help. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. Sergeant Greg Amos with the Missoula Police Department. I'd like to talk a little bit about something I see downtown routinely and that is pedestrians crossing against the pedestrian heads. So I'd just like to explain what is actually legal. You cannot begin crossing in the crosswalk when it's either flashing and in the countdown or solid red. The only time it's legal to begin crossing in that crosswalk is when the white crossing sign is displayed. The, what the countdown is for and the only thing that that's there for is to tell you how much time you have to finish crossing the street, presuming that you started when it was legal to do so. No matter what you're planning, if you plan to drink, Hey guys, we're back here with Kim Hutchinson and Catherine Hungerford, and you guys are here to talk about The Giving Tree. And of course, uh, Missoula Agent Service, if you don't already know, there are monthly guests coming on to Wake Up Missoula, and I'm glad you can join me here today. So um, can you tell people uh, what is Missoula Agent Services and uh, what is The Giving Tree? Yeah, um, you know, we're so thankful to be here. So thank you for having us this um, day. We're just really glad to be here. Um, Missoula Aging Services is a organization here in Missoula and um, we serve Missoula County. Our mission, of course, is to promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and those that serve, that care for those, that care for them. And so um, we serve over 34,000 wow. people a year and we're honored to do that. We don't do that by ourselves. We have um, wonderful support from the community organizations like yours, you know, to help us get the word out. And this time of year, we're doing a lot of interaction with the community. So right now we do have our community um, giving trees out and about. Yeah. And Missoula definitely does have a, a large aging population or the golden, golden oldies for sure um, in Missoula. And you guys do a lot of work with the elderly as well. But of course this giving tree is to help kind of support all your services at Missoula Agent Services as well. So let's talk about a little bit more about uh, um, giving trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so giving trees are, they're simply festive holiday trees or Christmas trees. Um, but instead of the traditional ornaments, um, they have tags on them. Do you wanna hold this yeah. up? Yeah. So um, anyone in the community can visit the locations and pick a tag and a dollar amount will support a specific program. So like $20 to provide a grocery card to an older adult or $12 provides one hour of homemaking services. Um, or $100 can provide 40 hours of mentoring through our foster grandparent program. Mm -hmm. So we have, um, they're all around town at specific locations, um, and it's just a really good way for the public to interact with um, what we do and to make a, a definite difference. Cool. And this is, I'm just throwing up your website right here, and of course this is uh, MissoulaAsianServices.org, and if people click on the very tab at the very top, it'll send you directly to the Giving Tree stuff as well. And you can also donate online. Can you um, kind of maybe even circumna help me circumnavigate this? Sure, it's a easy thing to do. Um, if you do go to our website and um, click on that banner up at the very top, it's red and bright and festive and it says click here so you can do that. Um, and that will take you right to the page that uh, talks about the Giving Trees. And then within that, there's um, some links that you can click and um, you know to learn a little bit more about share the love and um, it's just a simple way to to streamline it. it yeah 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 all right so um and how long has the giving tree been around oh gosh I think this was probably the fifth year yeah. so I think mm -hmm. it's the fifth year it started before either Kimmer and I were even yeah. there so it's been a tradition in the community for a little while um, we're thankful for the different spots that do have the trees um, MSO hub right on Higgins has us right in the window so we're so grateful for that location especially um, Subaru of Missoula has a 
Giving Tree right on their showroom floor. So when you drive down uh, Orange Street, you can see that mm. Giving Tree right in the window, all bright and festive. And um, yeah, it's just a fun way for people to come in, you know, take a, ch you know, whatever tag suits, you know, what they would like to do. And um, they can eat the candy cane, put a gift in the envelope, pop it in the mail. And it's just that simple. Cool. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you guys want to say? Anything else that I didn't touch upon? Well, uh, we, we were thinking about how Giving Trees are such a great idea for a family project. Like if, mm -hmm. you, if you also wanted to, to teach kids about philanthropy early, and um, especially this time of year, it's a, a really, really cool project to do. There's a, a tree at the library, which makes that really easy. Um, and all sorts of places around town, uh, Taco Sano on the south side. Um, the community and planning services office, the county administration office. So even if you're out running errands, you can still um, easily find a tree and, and select a tag. Yeah, and of course we have one at our Missoula Aging Services yeah. offices at 337 um, Stevens Avenue, and you can also stop in there and just hang, you know, hang out with us a little bit, get to know us, and um, ask for Catherine or Kim, who would be happy to give a tour. Um, you people can drop by their tags, you know, back to us there at LC. Awesome. Oh, great. Um, and one more uh, plug, uh, where can people find and where can people call and go to to find more information? Mm -hmm. Our website's easily accessible, missoulaagingservices.org. Uh, of course, our phone number is 728-7682. And, um, you know, we always have a real person answering our phone, so you won't get into a system or you won't have to push three or two or ten or whatever <laughs> you um, actually talk to a real person every time you call so yeah well yeah thanks for, thanks guys for joining me yeah. um, Thank you. and of course you can go to uh, many locations MSO hub super of Missoula Missoula um, County a administration office and many many more places about and of course always look for the uh, um, the candy canes yeah. with the numbers <laughs> and you Thank can't you. miss them thanks. so thanks guys Sergeant Greg Amundsen with the Missoula Police Department. I'd like to talk a little bit about bicycles riding on the sidewalks in the city of Missoula, which we see a lot because Missoula is a very bike friendly town. I would just like to let bicyclists know that they do have to yield to pedestrians on the sidewalk safely because they travel faster than a pedestrian, so they do have to do that in a safe manner. And then when you get to a crosswalk, you are actually required to slow your bicycle down to what would be called a pedestrian pace, and you cannot begin crossing until it's safe to do so. All right, we are back for your rest of the show of Wake Up Missoula, and I want to talk a little bit about what MCAT is all about. And of course, MCAT likes to um, talk to nonprofits and work with nonprofits and make uh, videos from nonprofits. So if you're a nonprofit or an organization in town that want to utilize MCAT, whether you want to rent equipment or use equipment, you can log on to our website. It is uh, MCAT.org. Let me just bring that up for a second. Yeah, just hold on a second. Of course, here is MCAT.org. You can go to uh, forms and it is under the Media Assistant Grant application and it is a great resource for any uh, local organization here in town who wants to utilize MCAT and uh, put their program on television whether it be a lecture, rally, cause, uh, concert and whatnot um, and we will go out there and we'll shoot it for you and then we will show it on MCAT about a month or so later. Um, we do have a, a couple new programs premiering this week as well and of course you can always log on to MCAT.org to watch them any time I'm gonna circumnavigate this just a little bit more uh, you can go to our channel 189 link so I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see it um, you click on either 189 or 190 189 is our public access channel and 190 is our civic channel which is mostly about city government and government meetings but we're gonna use this as an, a quick little example we're gonna to go to channel 189 it goes to public and you get to see all of our great public access programming along with a bunch of community events that happen here in town as well we have ASAF Cafe Montana Book Festival and these are basically loaded up by the most recent 
and um, recently uploaded onto MCAT as well. But of course, you can always log on to uh, <clears throat> MCAT.org to find out more information and have all these wonderful things. And of course, we live stream pretty much everything that you see here in front of you. And of course, if you want to learn more information about Wake Up Missoula with me, Scott Ramphy, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula where you can see the last, very last picture of Noel McAvoy on our morning show because it's just going to be me from now on. And of course, I, I'm going to try to see how it feel about it for the, for the next month or so, just kind of feel whether or not I can handle hosting the show by myself because I'm not really talking to anyone. I'm just kind of like talking to you. I don't know if I'm even talking to you. Who knows? But yeah, it can be very awkward, especially if you're just hosting alone. And I'm always looking for another uh, female um, sidekick. You know, more like a co-host. I don't want to think of a sidekick. You know, maybe they start out as a sidekick, but then they come into their own as a co-host. It's a great resource. It's a great um, opportunity. And I'm I'm always looking. If you're if you're out there, maybe you'll come find me. But uh, I, I might find you. Who knows? It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. But of course, um, I do want to just kind of slow things down a little bit, and I want to um, do a nice little Christmas story. And of course, it's never too early for Christmas because apparently, right after Thanksgiving, that's when Christmas is really kind of talked about, celebrated. But of course, um, <laughs> uh, people already put up all the Christmas ornaments before Thanksgiving, and, and they're just like, "Oh, Thanksgiving? What's that?" and yeah, so let's talk about some stories, and of course, I'm going to get a nice um, close-up of myself on, hold on, this camera. So let me just adjust just a wee bit. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There we go. All right, guys, <clears throat> this is a nice little short story that I just wrote. You know, I just wanted a nice little short story, nice little, I don't know if this would be considered a prose or a poem. Uh, it doesn't really rhyme, it just kind of flows. Okay, without further ado, here is Foggy Christmas. The light shines through my window as I look upon the white grayish tones diffusing the light from the sun. It is as, it is as if the day has been covered up with a blanket of clouds. The fog is nothing more to me than thoughts in my head. I hear the sounds of cars passing by and yet do not see them. Today is going to be within a bubble, knowing what's outside without really knowing who's there. It, it is both exciting and frightening at the same time. Christmas has come too soon, and I find myself rushing to figure out what I'm going to get my family for Christmas. I check my phone for the weather and find that this fog should have left the area hours ago. I put on some warm clothes and head to my car. The windows are frosted over, and before I take my tenth breath through my nose. I can feel the icicles forming around their follicles. I don't even know if the follicles is the right word for it, but bear with me. Um, I quickly pull my scarf around my face to protect it from the freezing air, and has, it has become even more thick, the fog, that is, when I looked outside my window. I could see a figure in the distance. It was one of my neighbors smoking his hourly cigarette. Of course, I wouldn't have known it was him unless I was standing five feet in front of him. It was as if the ice would just form as fast as I scraped it off. The ice had woven itself to form a thicker, whitish tint on the window. I had stayed on a single spot for several strokes of my window scraper. Suddenly, an image of a steering wheel and the driver's seat revealed itself. I jumped inside my car, this five-degree warmer vehicle, and started it. I should, I probably should have started my car long before I spent scraping the window, but you know, but now was not the time to fix that because it's hindsight. Um, I drove a quarter of the speed until I reached my f uh, first turn, not knowing of which side you could see anything. I got out and continued the ritual of scraping my window, but by now the 10 degree warmer car would prove easier to accomplish window scraping goals. After driving, for around the limited traffic areas for a bit. My car was a little less visibly impaired and I got on the main road to the nearest shopping center. I found a nice little store. I remember all kinds of toys I liked from colorful building blocks to video games about Italian men jumping on um, poor tortoises. Uh, I went in, <laughs> I went inside um, and that, 
Um, I went inside and saw that it was busy. Lines forming around the aisles of toys, arts and crafts, and occasional stationary supplies. Uh, a funny thought, a thought crossed my mind. A form of getting my niece and nephew school supplies, even though that they are way too young for that as well. Um, maybe my actions as an uncle would be good enough that the shiny colorful toys and the kids are drawn to uh, regardless if those movies they're based on were any good. Most of the time, they're not. Um, I grabbed a couple gimmicky items and waited in line for some time. The sounds of children screaming in the distance left me thinking, if that was happening anywhere else, people would run to help. Unfortunately, when kids cry in stores, they tend to be more on the selfish and bored points of the emotional spectrum. I walked outside as if the fog couldn't get any more thicker, and it did. Luckily, my car windows were perfectly fine, and I hopped in, and I was on my way to the next store. And yes, as seen on TV store, which has everything you need, if you have trouble with the simplest of tasks, of course. Um, also, uh, candles. Just lots and lots of candles. Just like, oh, just, oh, it's everywhere. Just think to yourself, how many candles is a lot, and double that. Uh, anyways, I walked into the store from outside the fog and found myself being greeted with coupons and booklets of stuff people don't need, but get anyways. I only have so many pockets, so I filled those useless plastic papers in my pocket. I looked around the area for things that are useful, but are not eyesores. Candles are always nice, but when Ever, whenever I give them to family, they re-gift them to me. So I make sure that the candle I like is a candle that they can re-gift to me. And of course, after a couple of berry and vanilla scented candles later, I got in line with people who tend to have one too many coupons hiding in their bottomless purses and pockets of their significant others as well. Uh, even in the coats of some of their children, um, I have a bag full of crap. I wouldn't say that they don't serve a purpose, but crap does serve a purpose. You just put it with the rest of your crap. Um, I wouldn't say, uh, you, you know, whatever. <laughs> but when you, let's see, take it from one place and put it in another. That's that's crap. Um, but when you get uh, when you start getting rid of stuff you don't you don't really need or think you want, you find that the fog was an invention of your own mind. So this year, my gift to you is perspective. So what is it that, um, what, what is a real gift for Christmas? Is it, um, is it stuff that just like, you just kind of put in, in one corner, or just shove in one thing or another, and then just kind of re-gift and give it to other people, just kind of move that carbon into another part of another person's life? But what, what is it really for you guys? So of course, I'm no more grandstanding. Let's move on. I have a nice little uh, video, and here is a whole bunch of brand new programming happening on MCAT, and you can watch it pretty much any time. And when I come back, I'm going to talk a bit, little bit about my stop motion anthology. It's a cowboy song. It's where Indians belong. God's country, my home, sweet home. Is there's no place like Montana? Big sky country, my home. Please set my spirit free. Rocky Mountain melody. These things are a part of me. Montana. Montana. is almost impossible, especially with R2-D2 always beeping and booping around the corner, the little <laughs> creep. The tight quarters allow me to casually slide and bump and fall against C-3PO, but they also make it difficult to hide the evidence of my desperate, unsatisfied longing. And I can't even give myself any relief because every time I want to use the one bathroom on board to have some private time, Han is already in there. They should call him Hand Solo with all the hours he spends spanking his little Wookiee. I'm going to have a stroke, heart attack, uh, something major. And I've seen this stuff done, sometimes for the better or worse. Uh, this is the right place to be. Um, so why are these other communities in the world that are spending less and doing better? What, what is the secret? The secret is this stuff. 
it's about community health, it's about prevention. So, the, you know, we use data a lot in healthcare. Um, and, and one of the things that has become more and more apparent with a lot of studies is when somebody goes to the doctor, how much of their visit is tied directly to the disease, whatever it may be. How many would say that the disease attributes more than half of the problem? Uh, the George W. Bush administration and, and those that were um, thinking about moving ahead with an attack saw very quickly that the public responded much more favorably to a justification of this attack in the name of defending this country against weapons of mass destruction and terrorism and aggression down the road than they did when they talked about promoting human rights and democracy and building stability. In other words, when they framed it as a situation where loss was possible, a horrible negative outcome was possible, the public got behind um, their policy stance. When they talked about positive outcomes, the public became a little bit less risk acceptant. Will this really be worth American blood and treasure to go promote democracy and human rights halfway around the world? And we see this pop up in all sorts of issue areas, climate change. If you want to support um, some of the expenses and adjustments that would go along with trying to mitigate climate change, uh, it is smarter to frame this as a potentially catastrophic outcome with really direct and negative uh, 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 outcomes for a wide range of, of society, a wide portion of society. All right. <clears throat> Welcome back. Um, that was what you guys can check out on MCAT. Um, we, you can check it out at MCAT.org and our video on demand. I gave you the titles of all the things that you can search for in our video on demand page, MCAT.org. Um, but of course, um, let's move on just a little bit. Um, I have a brand new uh, stop motion clip for you guys. It is my continuation of my stop motion anthology. Every Wednesday, I have a brand new stop motion video highlighting one thing or another, but eventually they're all come together in the end of my anthology season one. I don't know, I'm just kind of making up as I go along. And this week it's called Cop Drama. Yar, I've never seen that cannon in my life. Hey, Hank. I was wondering why you never called me. What happened with you? Sorry, honey. I was just going through a lot right now. Hey, wait a minute. Listen, when you get over what you have going on, call me. Ew, awkward. Man, shut up. I didn't mean to cause a scene. He just never took my order. Sir, that doesn't give you a right to attack a barista. Listen, my shift's about to run out. I gotta go. Do you think you can take care of this gentleman here? Huh? You've got to be kidding me. Hey you, I'm Officer Sam. I got this. Gerald, what seems to be the problem this time? It's just that I just don't feel safe in my neighborhood. Man, I've personally come down to your neighborhood and I haven't seen anything wrong. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, let's get some fresh air in this place. <clears throat> hey sir, uh, you okay? Do me a favor. Never start smoking. Sir, there's something going on with you. This is the third time you've rearranged your desk today. Listen, I don't got no time for this. You need to get out. I got a lot of work to do. Oh, you mean that cannon? Yes, it's mine. Sup, Sam. What's up? <laughs> yeah, there's some woman here to see you. Hi. I am the Brain Master. Once bow down to me. It's gonna be one of those days. You said it. <sighs> hey guys, welcome back. It is time for your city council uh, report of the day. Um, Let's talk about a little bit about what, what's happening in the city. Um, of course, if you haven't already heard that the mayor uh, released a letter just this past um, um, Monday highlighting that he's returning to the city council meeting and of course uh, last October he checked himself into rehab for his alcoholism. And of course, here's, a, here's the letter, here's a little uh, snippet of the letter that he wrote to uh, Missoula. Dear fellow Missoulians, on the evening of October 24th, I checked into a 28-day inpatient treatment program for alcoholism. Today, Monday, November 28th, I return to work in the mayor's office in Missoula, Montana, the city I love, to continue work I've loved for the last 11 years. I'm telling you this because you deserve to know that your mayor is an alcoholic in recovery. And I'm telling you because my story might help someone else 
get her or his life back. I've learned much over the last month about myself, about addiction, about life. I left treatment a more compassionate man, an incredibly grateful man, a humble man. I've learned that I can't drink safely. And of course, the mayor does plan f to run for re-election in 2011. And we do have a, a nice little quote from Jim Parker, who I do believe he's the uh, director of developmental services, but of course, he uh, praises the mayor for his um, courage. Tonight, Mayor Ingen, I'd just like to welcome you back to your seat where you belong. We're very glad to have you back. And I want to personally thank you on behalf of others, I'm sure, uh, of your strength and your courage to do what you needed to do to get yourself where you want to be. And to share that with the community, I think, takes a lot of courage and aplomb, uh, which I congratulate you on and thank you for. If it helps one person with their struggles, which I'm sure it will, it's well worth it. So welcome back. I'm glad to have you here and look forward to the year ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. And of course, um, just on our own personal note, is that um, by um, New Year's uh, 2017, I'll be, I, my personally self, will be celebrating two years of being alcohol free. Not, um, I didn't have any kind of struggle with alcoholism. It's just something that I decided to do. But that's just nor here nor there. Um, moving on to, um, the next topic, um, one of the bigger things that are happening with the city of Missoula, and of course, uh, there was really not anything um, big on the consent agenda, but there's a lot of big things happening in the city of Missoula, and they're talking about Costco. Costco plans um, or is trying to move to a new Broadway location. It's a little bit further towards the airport within the city limits, so they're working with the city of Missoula to make this happen. And of course, um, the first quote is Jason Shredder. Um, he talks about traffic issues he faces off Mullen and Flynn and England streets for those going to Costco, which have been a huge topic of discussion um, during this particular um, here uh, for all these hearings, basically. A ton of people flying through our neighborhood, going 35, 40 miles an hour. You know, they're cutting through the neighborhood because they're in a hurry and they're trying to get somewhere faster. And so, you know, my biggest concern is the road that they're trying to tie into our neighborhood and it creating a lot more traffic in our neighborhood and folks driving really fast. And, you know, what I'd like to see in this area is what we've seen in a lot of other places in Missoula is, you know, right now, for me to ride my bike on Flynn Lane, there's zero bike path, there's zero shoulder. Um, it's pretty unsafe just to walk there to try to connect to West Broadway unless you go down England Street. And so I'd like to see our, you know, pedestrian and bike paths and, and things like that um, not get left out in this development. And I personally would not like to see this road tied into our neighborhood and create you know, a ton more traffic where I'd like to see maybe a, another stoplight um, at, you know, Flynn and Mullen or Flynn and West Broadway. But um, from most of my neighbors that I've discussed this with, they feel the same way. They feel like there's already a lot of increased traffic in the neighborhood and um, they'd rather not see this road get tied into our neighborhood. And they All right, so that was uh, Jason Schrader and he was talking about uh, Costco's new location, but of course the traffic that um, gets that goes through England Street, and of course England Street, that particular area is just, um, I believe it's just west of Costco, uh, off of Reserve. If you go down that street and you're going to like TJ Maxx or Ross, and you keep going down that England Street, there's that roundabout. There's a huge um, throughway, and um, I I don't really see too many people um, who really need to take that road, but of course people who live up on Mullen tend to usually take that um, throughway just to avoid the reserve street traffic because the reserve street traffic is a nightmare if you haven't been down there, of course. <laughs> um, moving on, um, the cost, of course, um, Mr. Wilson, um, Ms. Wilson, um, she speaks more, I, I didn't get a clear first name from her, um, but of course this is Ms. Wilson. She speaks more on this topic um, in terms of the whole Costco would leave um, once it moved over. So this is what she had to say. I've followed this issue in the newspaper. I haven't seen anything that tells me that we have a plan for what to do with the empty box store that is being created when Costco moves out. If there is a plan, you'd better talk about it publicly 
you better have some hearings about it because right now uh, all it's going to create is additional blight and reduce property values, loss of tax revenue in that area. Uh, because local governments control land decisions and thus make deliberate determinations, it's up to you now to have a plan to avoid a ghost box. All right, so that's what Ms. Wilson had to say. And of course, uh, the next um, quote is from um, Jennifer Pinto, and she talks a little bit more about, uh, about some of the issues uh, Costco also has. Or trusting that you will honor the constituents who voted for you, that you will stand up for what is important and right and best for our community. I think we'll be able to find a different solution rather than rerouting these cars through our neighborhood. Thank All you. right, so um, that was just a quick little quote from um, Jennifer Pinto, and of course, uh, I'm gonna. This is the last quote, and there was just a whole lot of uh, people talking about, and uh, the biggest issue a lot of people are having is just the traffic um, congestion and all that stuff happening with uh, Costco in general um, and this is a way for them to speak out about certain traffic issues that are already happening on England Street um, this is the next quote is Deborah Johnson and the biggest concern of this is that um, people who go down Flynn Lane who take that throughway to kind of like sneak around to avoid reserve um, they also go through a school zone which is off of Flynn Lane and it is Hellgate High School um, and this is what she had to say a little bit about that. Um, my fear is that if Costco is allowed to put a road that dumps the traffic onto Flynn Lane, um, it will just bring more traffic into the Pleasant View area. Also, the amount of vehicles that go down Flynn is unreal. And with the great Hellgate Elementary School there um, on Flynn, so the extra traffic will cause more opportunities for a child to possibly get ran over or hit by a car. All right, so that's um, one of the concerns of it as well, is this increased traffic on Flynn Lane, uh, because Flynn Lane is connected to England Street, but it also is connected to Broadway. So if Costco did actually move to Broadway, um, a lot of uh, traffic would just still go on Flynn Lane. I mean, people would still take Flynn Lane to go around and all that stuff. And of course, if you haven't checked out the Missoulian today, they have a front page article about some um, kids walking on the Mary Street, which is one of the street that is being considered for a uh, alternative route towards uh, Costco as well, um, but of course, um, yeah, I mean that's that's basically what was the major points of discussion for the city council. It was all uh, public comment about uh, Costco and Costco's new location, the traffic that's around Costco. It's a lot of issues that were um, also that exist right now, but also. Um, future um, issues that may come into place. So, of course, the next meeting. So, the meeting was primarily short. It's it's 37 minutes. You guys can check out the whole entire meeting about all the public comments. There's a lot more people who spoke, uh, but they were mostly talking about the traffic issues and the safety issues, and they think and a lot of suggestions about putting up uh, slow down zones, maybe a couple more roundabouts, um, and also just like maybe even higher patrol areas as well. But of course, you can find out more information about CI by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us, or you can log on to mcat.org to watch the live stream. But of course, here is the website for the city of Missoula. And if you want more information about uh, what's coming up, meetings, um, just all sorts of things happening in the city of Missoula. And of course, um, what I always like to go to refer to is I like to go to your government, I go down to agendas, webcast minutes. You just wait a little bit. And then, of course, down here, all these current sessions and all this stuff. You can watch all the meetings on this website. And you see the whole list of stuff. Um, you can see agendas, see what's upcoming meetings and all that stuff. But, of course, we have all these meetings that are coming up today because it is the committee meetings um, stuff. And it's all starting this morning at 9.40 a.m. and it will continue all the way until about uh, 4.30, 4.45, depending upon um, how long they're going to talk about each topic. And of course, there's Community of the Whole, Admin and Finance, Parks and Conf Conservation, Land Use and Planning. And I, and I do believe Admin and Finance is going to be talking about their jail division program, which I'll have a little bit more on dissolve. Uh, <laughs> and I'll have a little bit more on that 
on Friday. Just talk a little bit more about that. Um, but of course, but of course, I keep on saying that. I got stuff. Um, what also do I have for you guys today in this wonderful morning show? Um, I think I'm going to talk a little bit about events, just a little bit about events. I'm not going to like hit hit it hard on events. I'm just going to mull over some events. But these are some of the highlighted events that I noticed happening this morning and Thursday as well. Um, but this morning, starting at the 8 a.m., actually right now, um, or if it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon when we replay, it already happened. So, of course, um, you can always check it out tomorrow morning as well at 8 a.m. And it's the Holiday Book Fair at Rattlesnake Elementary. It starts at 8 a.m. this morning. Of course, it will go on also tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. And it's going to be running from 8 to 8 today, um, 8 to 5 tomorrow, Friday 8 to 10 a.m. So it's going to be really short on Friday. So I'll talk a little bit more about that maybe on Friday just to kind of give it a last final push. But of course, um, it's a local author, book signing, and more at Rattle, oh, sorry, Rattlesnake's holiday annual book sale held in the school's library. Um, books for all ages, including adult bestsellers. Um, proceeds of the book fair will benefit the Rattlesnake Library. Special thanks to the PTA and the sponsors, Fact and Fiction, for that as well. And there's a uh, uh, this is a really interesting um, event that's happening at noon today. It is copyright, registering copyright, Missoula Public Library, and also at the same time in Billings, exactly around the same time, Sarah J. Rhodes, not her, but of course, um, many people of intellectual property attorneys um, in conjunction with the, Amer uh, with the American Intellectual Property Law Associates. That's a lot of intellectual property um, throwing. Oh, there's a lot of intellectual property law. So it's it's all about copyright. It teaches you about copyright, and they'll give a short presentation on general copyright laws and the uh, uh, processes of submitting a copyright application. Attorneys will then answer questions and assist anyone um, completing copyright applications. Um, while this workshop is free, participants are responsible to pay the government filing fee for electronic $35 or $55 or paper, which is $85. And of course, you can go to copyright.gov for more information just to learn more about what it means to truly copyright your uh, work of art, your uh, documents, your original ideas. So it's about uh, retaining your intellectual property. And But of course, um, this is something that a lot of people don't really do, but it's, it's definitely necessary uh, if you want to um, make money and keep the claim on your videos, like some of the videos that I make and all that stuff. Just because you write copyright on there doesn't mean it's legally binding, but sometimes it can be if you find the right lawyer to help you along the way as well. And of course, a workshop will take place in the large meeting room of the Missoula Public Library from noon to 1.30 today. So you can check that all out. And of course, Missoula Public Library, if you want to learn about smartphone photography, you can go to um, taking photographs with your smartphone, they will cover the basics of capturing images, um, organizing photos into files, and easy photo editing using your mobile devices. So if you have Instagram on your phone, you're golden. Um, there's holiday wreath making. I think this is a really cool one as well. This is happening at 5 p.m. at the Montana Natural History Center. Learn how to create beautiful holiday wreaths, uh, garland, or door hanging for the uh, local um, confers. Conifers. Conifers. Hmm. Should have read this before I said it. Okay, <laughs> we will uh, cover identification um, identification tips and facts about um, Montana evergreens as you work um, using fragrant bows. You will uh, build your basic creation. Uh, add cone springs, evergreen shrubs, ribbons, and just like miscellaneous items to make your wreath uh, just you know ever, even more special. Um, and this will be happening from five to seven p.m. at the National History Center. Um, it's $10 and of course $7 if you're a member. Um, registration is required. You have to call 406-327-0405 to RSVP. Again, you can always call 406-327-0405 and I think this is a wonderful program as well. And um, if you're an adult that wants to learn some ballet, Down Down Dance Collective is the place for you at 5 p.m. Every Wednesday, every single Wednesday, you can learn a little bit of ballet at Downtown Dance Collective. And I know some of the people who work at Downtown Dance Collective, they're great. They'll, they'll learn you something good about ballet. And it's good for your core and um, just like being graceful in general. So if you are maybe a little bit clumsy and you want to like maybe not 
trip over your own feet. Ballet is a good, um, nice little lesson, and it's weekly, so you can go anytime. And of course, uh, also uh, Legally Blonde, the musical, will be playing this week, and I believe it's the last week or so. Maybe next week we'll be playing as well. But I saw it last Saturday. I took my mom, um, who probably got me sick. Thanks, mom. But of course, Legally Blonde is happening at 7.30 tonight and of course throughout the weekend. Of course, you can also watch the matinees around 2 o'clock Saturday or Sunday. I think they have a nightly showing at, uh, at 5 o'clock on Sunday. But it's based on the beloved film of the same name, Legally Blonde, um, with the upbeat songs and dance numbers. The music follows uh, irrepressible Elle Woods from um, running Delta New chapter, meeting at UCLA to running rings around her opponents in court as a Harvard Law student. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's a great play. I suggest you watch it. There's a lot of oh burn moments in that play, and you'll really enjoy it. Um, Thursday, um, a museum of public library elf on a shelf on the shelf. So there's little creepy elves that kind of like they, they look to the left. And they are on a shelf, and you guys can check that out. The Museum of Public Library happening tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. The Children's Department will once again participate in the Elf on the Shelf program each morning from December 1st until December 24th. Of course, the library elf will hide in different places in the library in the Children's Department. So if you find him and tell one of the children's librarians, you'll be given a treat. So it would be great for your kid to uh, play a little bit of hide and seek with a little elf on the shelf. Um, and get a little a little prize for finding one. And of course, um, Missoula Public Library also has a toilet tree. So if you have any toilet trees, you can donate your toilet trees to the Missoula Public Library starting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. And you can pretty much do it anytime. You can contact Carolyn at 258-3817. You can also just call the Public Library and ask about its 721-BOOK. And you can be forwarded to Caroline's number, which again is 258 Three eight one seven, and the toilet trees go to um, benefit the YWCA's domestic violence shelter. Um, and of course, um, um, Thursday night, um, the the big event that always happens every first Thursday of the month is John Howard's Homegrown Comedy. It's an open mic union club at nine thirty. This first uh, Thursday of the month event has been around Missoula for quite some time now. I think uh, I want to say it's over a year or two. Um, John Howard hosts this event that is an open mic for aspiring uh, comedians who wish to find out if they are funny or not. So just figure that out. Um, it's it's a good it's a good environment. Everyone goes there because they want to laugh or be laughed at. But you you know it's. It's interesting <laughs> just to kind of figure out whether or not you're really funny or not. And um, I don't know if I'm funny. Some people laugh at me. Some people don't. I'm probably not going to do it because um, it's a lot easier for me to talk in front of a camera than it is to talk in front of people. <laughs> well, I don't know. I Actually, I don't. at this point, I have no idea what public speaking is all about, but whatever. <laughs> but, of course, those are your highlighted events happening in Missoula. You can all check it out at MissoulaEvents.net. There's a bunch of events happening Wednesdays. You have, um, at the top hat, you have, I think it's The Grateful Dead, a live recordings of The Grateful Dead. You can check that out. You get a nice little punch card, and you get a... Basically, if you fill out the punch card, you get a free ticket to one of the Top Hat shows. Unlimited Wilma shows, because if it's anything over like $30, it's like, mm -mm, no, not going to happen. But this happens during the happy hour. And of course, uh, Wednesday night is a great place for karaoke. If you're interested in doing a lot of singing karaoke, you can always go to Sunrise Saloon, um, Badlander. And of course, electronic music is happening at um, the Palace. So if you want to like hang out and just listen to electronic music and just chill, why not? You know, well, of course, you know, you can't listen to the electronic music and chill. It's just not possible. <laughs> but of course, uh, thanks for joining me on, on Wake Up Missoula. If you want to find out more information, you can log on to uh, Wake Up Missoula. Uh, ooh, hold on. I got to get this prepped. Wake Up Missoula. Dot dot com slash Wake Up Missoula to find out all sorts of wonderful information. You can follow, you can subscribe to us on YouTube. You can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. We're all over the place. We'll post um, our interviews and more. And of course, I want to thank um, Catherine Hungerford, Kim, Kim Hutchinson um, from the Missoula Agent Services. And if you want to check out um, what they're, uh, the Giving Trees, it is a great resource to help promote um, Missoula Agent Services. And, and it's a perfect time this season to give as well. And I also want to congratulate Amy Sillenberg from Climate Smart Missoula for their one-year anniversary, and if you guys are interested interested in 
um, going to their nice little event. Here is their website. Um, they're celebrating on December 1st at Imagination Brewing Company from 5 to 7 p.m. during their happy hour. And you want to find out more information, you can go to MissoulaClimateSmart.org. You can also go to MissoulaAgentServices.org to find out all about the Giving Trees, and it's right here on the very top tab. Thank you guys for joining me this morning on Wake Up Missoula. Um, and for MCAT and Channel 189 and 190, and of course, for you guys watching home online, um, thanks for joining me. And I hope this works out just me by myself as Noel goes off into the world and ASAF is. Oh, also one more thing. ASAF Adam and I will be playing at the uh, the Southgate Mall pretty much every single day. And on Saturdays, he'll be playing at Paddy Creek Market. Say hi to him. And you can always bug him on why he's not on Wake Up Missoula anymore. So um, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. Thank you.